Welcome to the Gals Guide to the Galaxy podcast, where a group of gals gather for you one cool thing around our topic of the month. Is it ancient history? Is it breaking news? Is it safe for work? Well, that's up to each gal. All we know is that... Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. Welcome back. I'm Debbie, and I'm joined by Bonnie, Leah, and the spirit of Katie. That's right. Talking about our one cool folktale and myth. Katie already talked about Theomot, and Bonnie talked about all the mythical Greek women. All of them. All of them. In succession. (laughs) It was 17 hours long, and it was amazing. It was. (laughs) But before we dive back in, let's get to know something random about our gal pals. And what I want to know is, do you have a favorite favorite quick fairy tale, regardless of gender? I do. Do you want me to go first, Bonnie? You can go first. Okay. Uh, Very quick. Uh, It's so utterly quick. Some would say the story only takes about three minutes. It's the werewolf of London. (laughs) Do you know what I'm talking about? (laughs) No. The Warren Zevon song oh. about the hmm. werewolf of London and how he saw Lon Chaney. Uh, Which is now going to be in my head Colada. all night. Thank you. Yes, exactly. But his <laughs> hair was perfect. <laughs> it was. <laughs> but I love the song and the idea of watch out for the werewolves of London is like a little fake tale. Uh, fake tale. That's me combining folk and fairy. <laughs> Fairy tale, folk tale becomes fake tale, apparently, okay. if you put it together. Uh, yes, so there you go. I'll go musical with it. Yay! <laughs> Bonnie? Yes. Well, one of my favorite movies growing up, and I remember watching it, I think, straight into like high school a lot, too. Thumbelina. Oh, I love oh, the yeah. Thumbelina. I think it was Disney. No, actually, it, it wasn't. Off, off it was Disney. It was, it was the other. The other. It was either Fox or Universal, but it was mm-hmm. Disney-like. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, but I remember Thumbelina. Thumbelina like yeah. that is probably subconsciously why one of the reasons I took French. Oh, because of that little birdie. Sweet. Ah, I yes. love Thumbelina. Exactly. Um, oh, that is a cute yeah, one. And then, like around middle school, I remember getting some Brian Froud books. Oh, like literally about fairies and the squish fairies. Little stories <laughs> about all of them. Yeah. So yes. I was like, your your daughter's not gonna like. That's what it is. Because we have the Lady Cottenham's book of pressed fairies. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh my god, it's amazing. Okay, Where is hold it? on one hot second. It's not gonna be over there. <laughs> Here's no, a... it's on our display. Ew. Well, yeah, because it's Fairy Month, yes, exactly. our Fairy Bill thing. Take a look at that. <laughs> it's a press she, fairy. It's book. a press fairy book. The when idea went, is. Oh my word. The idea is you. They took that book out on the garden, and when they found a fairy, they smashed it in the book, and there they are, pressed with the goop and everything. <laughs> And wow. it's the book that haunts my daughter's dreams. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yeah. exactly. Oh, yeah. well, they were telling but me about that. Stories. I they banged were... the book shut and I ca- caught the fairy. It is a really beautiful one. I like it best. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's like fairy is not having a good time here. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. She's, she's dead, y'all. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. <laughs> D- disturbed, saw one with an eye, bug it out. I'm done. <laughs> but when yes. uh, okay. your daughter yep. showed me that, I was like, oh, I, I'm pretty sure that's Brian Frown. It is. I think and it's his the, wife does stuff, too. The writing is by Terry Jones of Monty Python. And then the illustration is, uh, is which, Brian Frown. Which knight is Terry Jones? Oh, crap. Um, oh. Uh, Terry Jones. <laughs> <laughs> may, may, who apparently needs to go in the show notes. Yes, I will put in a picture of Terry Jones. <laughs> Find a great one. In the show notes. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's always my goal. I'm like, okay, which Monty Python dude is he? I go, right. like, which which dude in the Holy Grail? Well, they, multi- I mean, they play so many different characters. Oh, I don't yeah. know why I can't think of, like, a distinguishing, and I'm it sure I there's going to the be Monty movie. Python fans that are listening to this going, how can you not know which one's Terry Jones? Because they're yeah. all they're amazing. I know, exactly. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> It's process of elimination. Yeah. <laughs> Poor people around me in, was, I think I was like a freshman or something when I discovered that movie. Right. And of course, giant nerd. <laughs> I don't know how many times that first week I played that. I downloaded that thing off of Napster. Right. <laughs> like, and I was like, oh my God. Nerd culture yeah. is strong. <laughs> like, I cannot, like, I will. Yep. Uh, anytime yeah. anyone says a bit, I'm like, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit. A bit, a bit, a bit. <laughs> 
very true. Yeah. Yes. It's like saying me and the just me. listen me. for people yeah. around you to say me, me, me. Yeah, exactly. Like, you have to do that I know I'm you're out crowd. there. It's like a gut reaction. It's yeah. really weird. But yeah. yet I can't place up a python right now. Oh. In like <laughs> uh, middle school, I found yeah. uh, Brian Froud yes. book. I think a couple of them. Yeah. Um, but like they each have little stories. Yeah. And they're adorable. Like there's the butter toast fairy. Oh. That decides like when you, you drop your toast, yeah. if it's going to land butter side up they or down. Huh. They're the ones. Yes. Wow. Got it. Okay. And there's, there's Boone, I think is his name. He's this sweet little blue fairy. He's yep. like... He almost looks like a Care Bear fairy. <gasps> I love He's like Care a Bears. little fuzzy creature with wings. Aww. And he protects children in their dreams. Aww. And I'm pretty sure I saw him on a t-shirt at Hot Topic once. <laughs> oh. And I was like, that's Boone. What's he doing there? <laughs> the geek culture is strong with Hot Topic. <laughs> uh, yes, it is. Debbie, what is so, yours? What is your answer? I, You know what? That's why I asked you guys. Yeah. Because... Here's the thing. Yeah. As I was studying my Your one, one cool, cool thing, right? I was reading a lot of fairy tales and stories, yeah. and I lost interest in a lot of right. them because I started reading the origin stories and the originals. And yeah, right. Disney <laughs> has changed a lot of oh. stories. Oh yes, they have so mm-hmm. much. <laughs> um, Pocahontas. Yeah, Pocahontas. Point. Pocahontas would have been like what twelve. Mm-hmm. Well, there's so yeah. much wrong with it. What is it? The history chicks? I forget if it's the history chicks. It's probably the history chicks. Probably did like a good. I feel like it's maybe like a four hour <laughs> podcast on like her the real poker. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. It's See. so good because yeah she, and nobody knew that story right until she was gone right. And it's like interesting. Oh, and by the way, here's my take on <laughs> when I knew her. And right. Yeah. Uh-huh. How the uh-huh. stories change and evolve and mold. Yeah. Once there's no witnesses. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but if I had to pick a fairy tale character, yeah, it would probably be. I got nothing. <laughs> you're I like, really do. You're like, the I'm more blanking. I read, the more I'm like, right. Eh. Exactly. Um, there is Mulan. There is Mulan. There is Mulan. Um, she was my runner up, but I'm like, yeah. I do love I don't of consider London. her a fairy tale. Though, no, she's so. not really a fairy tale. She's more of yeah. a uh, folk tale of, uh, yeah, of yeah. Chinese origin. Yeah. But, yeah. but you know, she's, she would be one of my favorite. No, she is not my favorite Disney character. Oh, um, oh shoot. What is her name? Who is your favorite Disney character? Help me character? out, Greek mythologist. Who was the girl in Hercules? <gasps> Meg. Oh, Meg. 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 Megara. Yes. <laughs> Megara is awesome. Yes. I love her. Yes, this is true. But I like the Disney version. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Megara wasn't even really, the, like, there. the Hercules is so Disneyfied. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Like Hera is a loving mother. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Zeus no. a caring father. No, no, <laughs> no, yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> but it's adorable that they try. From that movie though, we get baby Pegasus, is, 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 is. and yes. I always put all the S's on it because it's that. so cool. Yeah, but he's so not cute. even part of Hercules. He's not, but he's, like, no, he's not. But it's he's either cute. Perseus or Theseus. I, I never had the remember. Animal? I don't care. <laughs> See, but if I'm gonna go for Peggy Pe- baby Pegasus, then says, says, says. then I go to Fantasia. Oh yes, this is very true. They yeah. are awesome. Exactly. You want to do the? So I like the beautiful. whole thing. Uh, like the meme going around the internet of like when you're a girl, like you love Ariel and the Little Mermaid. <laughs> no. Nope. But then when you watch it again as an adult, <laughs> yes. you're like. You are like 14. <laughs> yeah. You know. And then you lose your voice. Like you choose to lose For your some voice. random dude on a bus. Yeah. Exactly. Name Eric. Yeah. <laughs> Eric. Oh, and I heard somebody say, you know, somebody talking about, you know, well, it wasn't a problem for her to lose her voice because she had. Oh, because she had bazongas. Mm. She, right? had, she yeah. had shells. Sorry. You, she had shells. Not to mm. mention <laughs> your, and I forget what Ursula said, but she said it way better than. I mean, but right. I'm like, but somebody is like saying, yeah, Ursula was right. I'm yeah. like, dude, I'm going to slap you. <laughs> exactly. And then okay. in there at one point, like, I forget it. Now he's under a spell. I was going to say, yeah. Eric doesn't even notice they switch. Right. But I think he was under a spell. Yeah, he was. So. He yeah. was. Yeah. His eyes went all glowy. And that's the Disney thing for I'm under a spell. 
So. <laughs> but tough coat. But yeah. who is your one cool thing? My cool thing is yes, Mother Goose. Mother Goose. Mother Goose. Look at that! I tried to make it sound like I was swearing, but it didn't work. <laughs> Mother, <laughs> Mother Goose. Mother Goose. <laughs> we need a recording of uh, what's his face saying Mother Goose. What's whose face? Um, Samuel Jackson? No, I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it is oh Samuel yeah. Jackson. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love I'll it. just call him up and ask him. I'm sure yeah, he'd be no, more no, than no. happy to do that for yes, me. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, he Absolutely. read that bedtime story, which is Go amazing. the fuck to sleep? Yes. yes. Yeah. That's oh, amazing. yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is amazing. <laughs> Ooh, so what did you learn about Mother okay. Goose? I'm fascinated. Well, I learned that there's a whole lot of stories about Mother Goose. Oh. Was she real? Right. Was mm. she not real? Who was she? Right. So I came up with, I will start with a few possibilities. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Little detective work. Ready? Um, first of all, Boston. Okay. Circa late 1600s. Okay. Um, there was a woman named Mary Goose. Oh. Who died in 1690 at age 42. Okay. Her husband was Isaac. They had 10 children. Oh. He remarries Elizabeth Goose. Okay. Who had six children. That's a lot of children. Now they've got 16 children in the house. Would they fit in a shoe? shoe? They did. (laughs) (laughs) In stereo. I love it. We have figured it out. (laughs) But Elizabeth loved telling stories. Okay. Um, She told stories to her kids. Then they grew up. They got married. They had kids. Now she's telling the stories to her grandchildren. Mm. Her son-in-law, who had married Elizabeth's daughter, Elizabeth. Yes. Not so impressed with the stories. Oh. He liked he liked it quiet. Okay. And she was not. So I like her already. <laughs> right. Of course. So but, she's brilliant. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so he's trying to make fun of her and make her feel bad. So he, the story is he published this book of her stories in 1719. Um, and problem is they can't find the book. Oh. And they only know this book okay. exists because his great grandson, John Fleet Elliott, tells the story okay gotcha so, so it's a story without proof it's a story without proof um okay. and the only supposed co- copy was republished in 1833 as the only true mother goose oh, okay um so in boston yeah mary goose's tombstone even though it was elizabeth it was a storyteller right mary Go- goose has a tombstone and in the 1950s for about 20 years that was a big tourist attraction because look here's the real mother goose oh okay not true oh totally not true gotcha so dun 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 next story right sussex england 1704 okay martha gooch okay martha gooch was a nurse and um for a lot of babies she was in great demand everybody loved her because she the babies loved her the children loved her um they called her mother gooch Oh, okay. And but she told like silly rhymes and jingles to the kids and the par- the parents all thought it was really stupid stories and everything. <laughs> right. But the kids loved it. Yeah. And but the parents thought it was so silly, they started calling Mother Gooch Mother Goose. Oh. So you know, that's actually an improvement. I'm over here Isn't trying it? to yeah. like, call back Gooch. the giggling of Gooch. Yeah, because as soon yeah. as I heard Gooch, I immediately thought of Agnes Gooch oh. from I went oh, clerks. No. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Snooches, Magooches. Yeah. 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 Snooches, Magooches. But yeah. Agnes Gooch, because I yeah. love that movie. That I, oh, um, oh, how am I blanking? Cause it's Rosalind a- Russell. Uh, I own the book. <laughs> uh, Life is a banquet, and most poor stuck- suckers are starving to death. How can I not say her name? Ah, uh, crap. Rosal- because Rosalind Russell made like 200 movies. <laughs> yeah. Lucia Ball remade it, though. Crap. As a musical. Uh, there's no bit, no. Um, the dancing, no, no, oh. it's, um, I don't know. I'll put it in the show notes. Yeah, I'll put it in the show notes. I, <laughs> oh, I suck. I can't believe I can't remember it. Totally it's like happens. one of my four favorite stories. Okay. So, gotcha. um, anyway, she's. Mame. Mame. Yes. Mame. Thank you. Mame. Oh my God. All I did was type in Lucille and all of a sudden I'm like, isn't it Mame? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Sorry. 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 Yeah. And it's awesome. We're back. So, yeah. Okay. So, anyway, this physician named Ronald Barclay wrote down the stories and published Ye Men- Melodious Rhymes of Mother Goose in 1712. Okay. Again, nobody can find the book. Oh, okay. So, no problem. Yeah. Probably not true. Got it. Okay. So, um, since the first book call- that was actually a book of Mother Goose stories right. was actually written in 1697, both of them. Nope. Too late. Uh, nice try. Okay. 
Um, so, but apparently back then, uh, when you talked about a mother goose tale, yeah, that was kind of the French version of, and let me say it Ooh, correctly in the Frenchness. Yes. In the Frenchness. Yeah. Where is it? Where is it? <laughs> Parlez-vous. Mer- <laughs> Merloy. Ma Mère Loy or something like that. Okay. It's my mother goose. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So, but okay. anyway, um, that was, when you said that, that's kind of the French version of what in English we talk about old wives tale. Oh, so it's just a like a thing. Story. Okay. A mother goose story. It's kind of like, um, an urban legend it doesn't really have an actual like birth or person or something like that. It's just a wise tale in that. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. But there's still, but was there really a mother goose? Right. Was there a start so, of that? Crime? Yeah. Was right. there a start of that? Yeah. So we go back a whole long way to like ninth century. Oh, wow. Okay. So hmm. tenth, I, I can't remember. Anyway, she, she lived 964 to 1010. Oh, um, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ways backs. Okay. Bertha of Burgundy. Way Bertha of Burgundy. Let's, yes. let's go the, the go. English way. I do remember rather the house of Burgundy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Gotcha. From there. Um, she was the second wife of King Robert II, Robert the Pious of France. Okay. Not Robert the Bruce. Got it. No. Um, and not <laughs> very pious Bruce. either. Because right, um, Bertha was his second cousin. Oh, no. And second wife. I mean, we didn't know. Um, he we he know. just kind of ditched his first wife right. and said, I want to marry my cousin instead. You know, like you do. Yeah. <laughs> two popes. <laughs> Mom, two. Bonnie's like freaking out inside. <laughs> two yeah. popes said, no, you can't do this. <laughs> and he went, so, Pope, what do you know? It's my cousin. No, they made him. they made him do it. They made him stop the marriage. They made him get, and he Ooh. remarried, but he kept trying to go back to her over the time. <laughs> but... That's her. Gross. Yeah. So maybe, but okay. Maybe not. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Then you he go back. Like he was busy, and she was busy doing yeah. other things. If you yeah. know what I'm saying. Aww. And not real, but you know, no stories. It just right. she happened to be named Bertha. So you know, maybe. Right. Maybe. Maybe. Because you go back farther mm-hmm. to Bertrada II of Leon, okay, who lived seven ten to seven twenty seven. Okay. Um, she was known as. Bertrada the Younger, or Bertha Broadfoot, or Queen Goosefoot. Oh. Um, which Latin was Regina Pede Ok. Okay. Sorry, people who actually know Latin. Go. I'm just going to go with Regina Phalange then? Sorry, yeah. That's a, that's a friend's reference. Friends reference. <laughs> um, but she was married to Pepin the Short. Um, but again, cousins not oh. sanctioned by the popes. Until. Right. They had a child yeah. that needed to be legitimized because it's Charlemagne. Oh, Charlemagne. She's Charlemagne's mother. I suddenly remember my Charlemagne. <laughs> but they called her um, Bertha Clubfoot or Goosefoot Bertha because they thought she had a clubfoot. Okay. Um, but we don't hear that t- that particular name until like the 13th century. Okay. Mm, there was a poem written about, about her. her. Yeah. Le Roman de Berthe et aux grand pies. Uh, Whatever. Written 17, 1270, sorry. Okay. Um, and then another poem about her a couple hundred years later. I'm not even going to try to read it. Um, <laughs> maybe she had a club foot. But they were celebrating that because right. apparently back then there were legends in Europe and in Asia. Yes. That club footed people were the link between the world of the living and the spirit world. Okay. Funny story. Yeah. My husband has web toes. Freaks me out. I say he's part duck. Okay. <laughs> but he told me the same thing, that there was a legend that if you yes. had webbed toes, like two of your toes were together with extra skin, that you were part of this like spirit lineage crap. And I went, no, it's still gross. Get your toes <laughs> off of me. <laughs> ah, it freaks me out because he tries to pick things up with it. Anyway. Oh, mm. God. Oh, is, they're on both. Yeah. Bo's feet are webbed. Mm. Not every okay. single toe, but it's weird. It's weird. <laughs> But I could see the goose reference, yeah, with either a webbed foot or a cleft foot, yeah, or, yeah. Oh, but yeah, they they said that was possibly okay. The, and and she might have known how to read and write, yeah, because you know what I mean. She was rich, but yeah. or royalty, but yeah, it doesn't necessarily mean she could read and write. But she would yeah. have a little or bit more uh, availability. Yeah. <laughs> and if anybody who actually most people who would actually say she was a real person or that the story came from 
her. Because, right. Even the urban legend yeah. of an old wives tale, a mother goose yeah. story, it could be from her. Because Bertrada of Leon was known for telling stories to the kids. Ah, so okay. maybe gotcha. it was. Right. Then I ran across one more story. Okay. Yes. Last minute. And I'm like, seriously, dude? <laughs> but. Right. From I found a Tumblr, Tumblr list of 100 witches. Okay. Mother Goose is listed as number 52 <gasps> as a witch. Oh. Um, and according to this, and then I found it on other sites too. It wasn't right. just Tumblr. Yes, yes. That's just where Tumblr. you found it first. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but apparently there are people who claim that Mother Goose is a secret continuation of the Germanic goddess Holda. <gasps> oh. So who I know very little about yeah because i'd already been down like 60 dozen rabbit holes right looking at all the fairy tales and but i got she sidetracked was, but, but if she yeah. was a storyteller in the germanic tradition yeah and that crosses some streams and it even ties into grim a little bit too. yeah it does so interesting um yeah because it's kind of interesting that when you look at pictures of mother goose yeah um when they show pictures, it's she's a woman telling stories to kids. Right, exactly. And then usually wearing a bonnet. Yeah. Yeah. And and then it morphs, <laughs> but more about that later. Right. <laughs> so um we'll go to the first books of Mother Goose because everybody claims we had the first original Mother Goose. Oh, gotcha. America. 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 Yeah. Tried that, <laughs> you know. Right. Um England tried with their Martha Gooch. Right. Um, but the first book that actually was that um was Oh, here we're going to try. Histoires au contest du temps passé, avec des moralités. Okay. I which hear trans- morality. Yeah, which okay. translates to word. stories or tales from past times mm-hmm. and subtitled Conte de la Ma Mère Loy, which is Tales from My Mother Goose, oh. which is actually written in the frontispiece. Okay. But there, along gotcha. with a picture of a woman dressed just normal plain clothes. Plain okay. clothes Telling the story to, to children. Oh, okay. Um, so, and that was that was written in 1697, translated to English in 1729. Oh, okay. So, um, so possibly a really strong French origin yeah. in the 1600s. How? And here's the stories that were in it. The original story. Yeah. Sleeping Beauty. Oh, okay. Little Red Riding Hood. There it is. Bluebeard. Mm-hmm. The Master Cat or Puss in Boots. Oh, Puss in Boots. I'm like, I don't know the Master Cat, yeah. but I know but Puss in Boots. Boots. Diamonds and Toads. Okay. Cinderella. Yeah. Ricket with the Tuft. Okay. Or Rock, or Ricky with the, uh, Ricky of the Tuft. Okay. Um, and Hop on My Thumb. Okay. Some of these stories I'd heard of, some of them I yeah. hadn't. Same. Um, yeah. But they were stories. Yeah. They yeah. were not nursery rhymes or anything like that right um, but they were stories um in england mother goose's melody or Sol- sonnets for the cradle was written by a man named john newberry in 16 1765 is that where we get the newberry medal uh newberry award? no oh okay all right no. gotcha. okay. um different spelling okay got it um I don't know where Newberry came from, I but I know it's, I know they're spelled wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Unless I misspelled it on here. Which oh, you're fine. Possible. You're fine. <laughs> I, I think I cut and pasted. So it's no, it's not me. Uh, but that was the first time that yeah. they were actually doing poems. Oh, okay. So, um, that old mother Hubbard, you know, uh, oh gosh. old mother Hubbard went to the cupboard, you know, where yeah. it was more of a rhyming. Thing. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Got it. Um, and, but I do have to give an honor, honorable mention to England because there was a, earlier nursery rhyme book Mm -hmm. called rhymes of the nursery or lullabies for children around 1650 it was nursery rhymes gotcha but not mother goose it maybe and then it blended it just kind of blended the two of them together so yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. i Um, can see that did show up in america we're first in everything (laughs) but we're not we're not did not show up (laughs) in america until they reprinted the english book of John Newberry's in okay. 1785. Okay. By, interestingly enough, Isaiah Thomas, whose wife was a fleet. She was at, his wife was actually the grand great granddaughter of Elizabeth Goose, and even he said, "No, that's like this a, is the Mother Goose story." That's like a six <laughs> degrees of separation. Yes, so much they intertwined again. Yeah, it it is. Wow, it's weird. Interesting. But even before oh. the book, there were yeah. there were. St- mentions of mother goose so yeah. in 1650 
some guy just ma- mentions in passing. Yeah, and again, he's French. Oh, these French. <laughs> Comme conte like- de la mer oi um, just said, you know, this was like a Mother Goose story. Right. So yeah. that was just a saying. Yeah, exactly. So, okay. And apparently the the Charles Perrault that collected these stories, he didn't write them. Right. Yeah. He just yeah. collected them. Yeah. Kinda no, like he just Grimm's collected them. Did a little bit. Yeah. He said, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A hundred years after this guy. Uh-huh. Wait, yeah. Hey, this looks profitable. <laughs> yeah. Now there was another, there was another person, Marie Catherine Le Jumel de Barnville, uh, known as the Baroness of Delnoy. Okay. She is actually the one who coined the term fairy tales. Oh. She is the one who started it. Oh. She called her works because she was a writer and she yeah. called her works Comme de Fées. Which is fairy tales. Oh, gotcha. So cute. Yeah, that's neat that the even the term fairy tales has been uh, coined by a woman. So yeah, look at yeah, that. it was. So uh-uh. Mother Goose has actually evolved over the years, right? You know, she um, was a storyteller, and then it became in 1806 they turned her into a pantomime. Oh, okay. and there was a story called Harlequin and Mother Goose or the Golden Egg. Um, okay. And it played, it is known as the most successful pantomime ever. It ran for 92 nights straight. Oh, wow. So, yeah, that yeah. was, that's a record. That's, oh, those French in their pantomime. Yeah. <laughs> but interestingly enough, Mother Goose was played by Grimaldi the Cra- Clown. Oh, a okay. man. So, I mean, I'll take it. I yeah. A <laughs> hundred years later, yeah. Drury Lane Theater, they rewrite the story. Yeah. Do another Mother Goose pantomime. Uh, pantomime uh, maybe not pantomime, I, but I think it was. Okay. Um, very popular in British theater. Ah. Had several different actors playing Mother Goose. Mother Goose has never oh. played by a woman, only men. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So, yeah. The, and like, Shakespeare, Shakespeare, a lot of the characters. Yeah. Yeah, yeah all men. They, they wrote... And they actually wrote, when they wrote the new version, mm-hmm. they wrote it specifically for one guy. Gotcha. And so he, Dan Leno, I've never heard of. Yeah. Um, could not help wondering if he was married to Jay, but, or related to Jay, but I, I, I'm like, nope, nope, nope. Too many <laughs> rabbit holes. <laughs> Don't look there right, too. Exactly. So, yes, I know, right? <laughs> this will never get yeah. out if I keep looking at rabbit holes. Yes. <laughs> but just as she, just as the story of you know, Mother Goose as a character yeah. evolved, so did her appearance in the books. Ah. In like I said in the beginning, she was just this woman showing, right. telling stories, reading stories to kids. Well, then the pantomime comes out, and they're showing her, and there was more of a ghostly thing, and right. so they had her looking more witch-like. Okay, and so the pictures look, yeah, <laughs> there it is. Actually, Baba showed Yaga. up in there. Yeah, um, and then the goose shows up. The okay. whole riding the goose, right. and sometimes Mother Goose is actually the goose, right? Yes. Um, I but, think that was on my kid's book. It was an actual goose with yeah. a bonnet on bonnet. it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. You know, make sure the, the goose's hair doesn't get messed up. Right. Right. Exactly. Absolutely. Gotta be looking pretty. You can't yeah. wear, like, pants, but you right. gotta have a hat. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Donald Duck didn't have pants. Uh, no. no. <laughs> but a shirt. <laughs> Did yeah. have a shirt. <laughs> and Mickey had <laughs> pants, but no shirt. Mm-hmm. Disney's, Go figure. Disney's weird. Yeah. <laughs> Don't so, say me Disney. <laughs> so mostly now she's just pictured as, you know, this friendly woman riding a goose and yeah. telling these just lovely tales that I have mean, been. I mean, she's riding a goose. There's no, there's no Zeus in this, right? She's Thumbelina? Yeah. <laughs> like, is the goose but, really big or is she really small? Apparently the goose is really, really big. Small. Yeah, right. Um, there there's, there's and, a. And she's really small. <laughs> There is actually nursery rhyme that is actually about Mother Goose. Oh, okay. It is a 15 stanza poem. Yeah. I am not reading the whole thing. That's fine. That's fine. I'll but put it in the show notes. <laughs> the, the, the short version. Yes, I, I, I will yes. send you the link. Perfect. Um, but the short version is old Mother Goose, when she wanted to wander, would ride through the air on a very fine gander. Jack's mother came in and caught the goose soon and mounting its back flew up to the moon. Zeus. <laughs> no, I but mean, there's a whole story no, behind just, that they're flying away it's yeah. so cute yes exactly it's like a horse okay so <laughs> I'm, just there. Yeah. I'm just picturing you know we got Canadian geese here and they are the meanest they are so aren't mean. they though so I'm yeah. picturing a giant goose yeah. like it's freaking King Kong goose are also like, very mean too terrifying. not just yeah. Canadian ones yeah uh, but she's yeah. always on a white goose never a Canadian goose right not even in America right so 
Go figure. The purity of the nursery rhyme. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I found a couple of rabbit holes I'm going to share with you. First okay. of all, fairy tales. Yeah. They lied. Oh yeah. Oh, they so they're yeah. so sanitized. Yes. Um, the one they're for entertainment. <laughs> yeah. The first one. And by the way, when the when the first mother goose stories were told they were not told for children they were uh. told for adults <laughs> they all had this moral to them of course um and usually directed at the women uh-huh. Does the, the man um, from nantucket nantucket <laughs> in them that was not in the original <laughs> book <laughs> right. but but they were like the the story of sleeping beauty that just so sweet in disney right just wait for your prince in to come. In all the versions, in all the older versions, yeah. um, he didn't kiss her and wake her up. Gotcha. He slept he, with her. He slept with her I while know. she was asleep. <laughs> and the one that the one that ticked me off the most was the one where they're talking about, and this is supposedly in a sanitized version of it. Yeah. But still holding truth to it. He, how they put it, tasted the fruits of first love. Oh. I'm like. Call a rape a rape, I would know, you? know, right. Exactly. You know? It's like, ah, and, right. and got her pregnant. Yeah. And. Is she still unconscious? She's still unconscious. <laughs> she Even has the. Labor won't wake you up. She has the child or two children, depending on the version. Okay. And um, in one where it was not a spindle, it was a, a, a st- stick of flax. Oh, oh okay. the the baby reaches over, pulls the flax out of the mother's finger, and that wakes her up. Oh, the baby! So the wakes baby her. rescues her. Uh, I can get behind that one. Right, right. The That's whole cute. the whole rapist is the rescuer. Mm, no, 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 no. Uh, I don't get into that. But all that the, um, but all of these stories had origins going back centuries. Right. There yeah. are Red Riding Hood. He talked about how he wrote Red Riding Hood mm-hmm. as a moralistic ta- tale for girls to be careful of yes. young men in you know because yes, you didn't, exactly yes. couldn't trust them but there are archetypal stories in china in asia in africa mm-hmm. about girls and wolves a little and, red riding like motif in yeah. other countries yeah yeah, oh, yeah. she doesn't necessarily yeah. have a it's red cap it's, but be it's careful in the woods yeah, yeah. be careful in the woods mm-hmm. um same thing with cinderella there yeah. are stories everywhere. Mm-hmm. There's the cinders. Her name is Cinderella from the cinders from the fire. Uh, yeah. Because yeah. she's always cleaning the fireplace yeah. and stuff like that. I mean, that. my yeah. favorite right. one is Ever After. Oh, of course. Yeah, that yes. one. Yes. Amy one. Adams in that one. Uh, Drew or no, Barrymore. no, that's a Drew Barrymore yeah, one. that's a Drew Sorry. Barrymore. Oh, that's right. What's I like yes. Ella Enchanted. Yes. Ella and yes. Chance. Yes. I got. I had to read that. I was reading that for school. I think we had like a, like a book club thing, mm-hmm. or yeah. something, or we had to read so many books or whatever. Yeah, right. To get a pizza. I was gonna whatever. say, yeah, for your book yeah. it. No, yeah, I think absolutely. It was after pizza, <laughs> but I think we had to read so many. And I got like three quarters of the way through before I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. This is a Cinderella. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I did like it. The Ever After yeah. Drew Barrymore version, though, is quite yeah. That one's awesome too. It's quite nice. Yeah, it's a plus. It's a breath of fresh air. <laughs> Which brings me to yes. Um, there have been other types of Mother Goose stories that yes. have been written. Um, one of them I'm just mentioning in passing because I just thought it was a really cool thing. Mm-hmm. Apparently, the first children's book that was written by Frank Baum. Yes, like the Wizard, the of, Oz Wizard of Oz guy, yeah. was Mother Goose in prose. Oh. He took several of the poems and put the poem, and then he told a story about it. Oh, cute. And turned it to it. I have no idea what the stories are. Right. I just thought it was interesting. That's neat. Also, in his book, mm-hmm. he did a history of who Mother Goose might be. Oh. Yeah. So he um, did a little research. Yeah. Was like, cure my theory. Yeah. And, ooh. And, and ended it with... It's just she's just a really cool person, whether she existed right. or not. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but it was yeah, I just thought that was really interesting. Uh-huh. Um and then um in the nineteen seventies, there was a book written by Eve Merriam, which I think the book I think the library needs. Okay, gotcha. Um it's called Inner City Mother Goose. Oh. Um it was modernized and rewritten for Inner City. Ooh. Nice. Um, kind of like the Wiz of Wizard of Oz. Sorry, yeah, kind of like that. We were just talking about the Wizard of Oz. Yes. Yeah, and it was. Yeah, and it was oh. so well loved that by 1976, 
There's a New York Times article where the Policeman's Benevolent Association is asking for them to ban the book at the library. Oh, because everybody's trying to check it out, sort of. Because thing. she's <laughs> writing st- uh, fairy tales like or poems like Jack be nimble, Jack be quick, snap the bat blade and give it a flick, grab Whoa. the purse, it's easily done. Then just for kicks, just for fun, plunge the knife and cut and run. Oh no! Oh. Oh, she's enabling. Oh. Yeah. And then there's... <laughs> na- fun. Yeah. And then there's, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the double lock will keep. <laughs> oh. oh, no. So, yeah. Um, yes. I do have a book of politically incorrect bedtime stories. That, that was sounds- the other one. Political. Yeah. That's... But this is... <laughs> yeah. That one's very different. I yeah. used to own that book. Yeah. Politically correct the bedtime stories. The one. Yep. No, this was not... No, oh. this is politically correct oh. bedtime stories. Oh, no, I had the incorrect. Version. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> this was politically correct. And I found out about it because I'm sitting in church one one day yeah. and this guy starts telling a fairy tale. Right. I'm like, you can't tell that as your children's story in church. <laughs> right. But it then he ends it. And in the politically correct bedtime stories, yeah. um, the women are empowered. Oh. There and they go. do sensible things. They do whatever and, they damn well want. Yeah. <laughs> and and they have much better endings. See? And equality. Equality. <laughs> um it can exist. And yeah, a lot of people were really ticked off about it because you can't mess with the fairy tales oh, and you can. When it, and yeah, all this stuff. Exactly. But They're public domain. They are what we make yeah. of them. They evolved with the times. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not incredibly well written. Well, but that. it was a really, really interesting yeah. read to read them. Um, so it just threw that in there. Yeah, exactly. So um, I love it. Yeah, over <laughs> the years, the centuries. Yes, exactly. Mother Goose has evolved um, in how she looks and how she acts and yeah. what she said. She also went from scary grown-up stories to mm-hmm. kid tales. They went through a very moralistic period because everything had to have a moral. Right. There has been research done yeah. on the nursery rhymes that that kind of rhyming and mm-hmm. really teaches kids uh, linguistic skills. Oh, very cool. So it is actually a good thing. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Well, that wraps it up for this this week. Join us next week as our next gal pal shares her one cool folktale and myth as the Gal's Guide podcast continues. Thanks for listening. For show notes, links, and images from this week's show, visit galsguide.org. Want exclusive stuff like deleted bits and major bloopers? Become a Gal's Guide patron today. Thanks for listening.